Okay, guys, welcome to lecture 11. Um, it's our first lecture in sexual selection. We are going to have three lectures in sexual selection. Uh, we've considerably expanded this topic in third year <clears throat> because it is a very important topic and it's we're dealing with it in the section of Darwin and Mendel because, of course, as you know, sexual selection was another one of Mr. Charles Darwin's ideas. All right. So you will remember from the last lectures, please, you should have watched the last lectures. If you didn't watch it and you skipped to this lecture, I feel very sorry for you. You're not going to do well in the module. You are not listening to my instructions. Listen to my instructions and you will be fine. So my instructions are please watch all the lectures in order. Okay, don't skip. Please don't skip for your own good. Don't skip. Right, let's continue. So from the last lectures, I told you that Darwin published his book about natural selection, which answered the question of questions. Why are all the organisms, why do they all seem to be perfectly suited to their environment, to their own environment? They just seem to blend in to their own environments. Why? And that is because of natural selection. And that he explained in the book called uh, The Origin of Species uh, by means of natural selection. We've been through this in previous lectures. Another book that Darwin published uh, in 1871, 12 years after he published The Origin of Species, he published the book called The Descent of man by man he means humans right the descent of man and selection in relation to sex do you see that that was the first time ever that somebody used the idea for selection within a species looking at sex okay to see does one sex, maybe the male, maybe the female, does one of them choose the other one? If they choosing, that means what is happening? They are selecting another one, right? So if you have this going on, you are going to select always the males that are, or the females that are preferred by a certain, by a certain sex and that leads to evolution but in a slightly different way compared to natural selection remember the both ideas of darwin natural selection and sexual selection they involve what selection they involve a choice it is just depending on who is making the choice we're going to unpack that in this um in this lecture or in this next couple of lectures okay so why did he develop the idea of sexual selection? Why did Mr. Darwin come up with this idea? Well, the reason is because he found that in nature that there were several situations that presented a problem for his theory of natural selection. Remember, when he came up, remember he was reluctant to publish his book about natural selection. He waited for 20 years because he was afraid that the people from the church will um, undermine his book and tell him that he doesn't know what he's talking about and so on. So he was afraid. Since he published the book, of course he got many criticisms. And one of the criticisms was some clever guys who said to him, Mare, Professor Darwin, your idea of natural selection is supposed to answer the question of why is why are all the organisms that you see perfectly suited to their environment, right? That was the question that Darwin answered with natural selection. But some cli some guys <laughs> who didn't like his idea of natural selection said to him, Mare, what happens? In those situations where you find an organism, Marie is not perfectly suited to his environment. So, 
you can witness an animal or a plant that is not perfectly suitable. Remember, natural selection is the answer to why are some organisms perfectly suited to the environment. But there are also organisms that appear that are not perfectly suited to the environment. And this was a question to Darwin. And he thought long and hard for 12 years, as you see. For 12 years, he thought about this. Why are some organisms not perfectly suited to the environment? And that's why he came up with the idea of sexual selection. Okay? Because some ideas, some, sorry, species, were clearly not perfectly suited to the environment. Look at this for an example. Clearly, you can see here, the, pe the peahen, this is a female here. The peacock is this one here, right? You, you know the difference between peahen and peacock, right? This is the male, the peacock. So the peahen, she looks normal. She doesn't have any crazy feathers, right? If a predator is chasing the peahen, she will be able to escape. But look at the peacock. Nah? Look at these huge feathers he's got here. If a predator like a cat or a something, leopard or whatever, is chasing that peacock, those feathers are so heavy, he could be caught. He could be caught by that predator. In other words, someone who is looking at that is saying to Mr. Darwin, Mar Mr. Darwin, that peacock is not perfectly suited to its environment. How can your theory answer this question? Because you said your theory, natural selection, can answer the question of why is the animal most perfectly suited to the environment? Here I, we are giving you examples, Mr. Darwin, of animals that are not perfectly suited. How does your theory of natural selection answer this one? That was the question that Darwin got. And he was sitting for 12 years thinking and thinking and thinking, what could be the answer to this question, right? Because people were clearly trying to find a flaw in his theory of natural selection. What other examples are clearly against going against natural selection? The song of a blackbird. Have you? No, this is not a very good example, actually. But you know birds. You hear them sing, right? Especially if you come from a rural area, you will hear many birds, especially in the rainy season. No? Chirping, 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 chirping. How is it possible that you can have such a long song, loud chirping, 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 if you are a male bird? Why? You are trying to attract a female, aren't you? But this loud calling, it's not only attracting a female, right? What is it going to also attract? It's going to attract a predator. A predator knows that you're calling. It can hear you like an owl or a cat or something that wants to eat that bird. So, so animals are doing things that are, that are not suiting them perfectly to the environment. Look at the antlers of this Irish elk here. It is now an extinct animal found in Ireland. But look at this. This is the size of an average human being here. Look at the size of this Irish elk. And how big are the horns? Are those horns really necessary? What if a predator is chasing this one? Is the, are those horns going to keep it from escaping? There are many other characteristics. Look at what we call sexual dimorphism, right? Sexual dimorphism in animals is where the male is much bigger than the female, or rather has a different form, right? Morphism means form. So it has a different form. So look at here, bison. Here's a female is much smaller than the male. Walrus, female is much smaller than the male. Look at here in pheasants. The female is not so beautiful and colored like the male. Again, here in this bird, you see the female is looking normal. The male is the one looking beautiful, right? Look at in these beetles. Why is the male beetle the one with this horn here and not the female? Why is the male lizard the one with the red color and not the female. Why is it the male fish who has this red color here and not the female? Why? These are questions because if you look at that, what is it telling you immediately? Either the male is too big or the male is too colorful, right? It's, it's clear from those pictures I've put there. Why 
other. A too big male cannot escape as quickly as a female. He's going to get eaten by something. A too colorful male is, is not going to, come, to blend into the environment like a female can. So there are those colorful males that you see there. They can be spotted easily by predators. So why are these animals not perfectly, these males especially, not perfectly suited to the environment? This is the question. That is why Darwin had to think long and hard and came up with the idea of sexual selection. So, sexual selection is actually part of natural selection, okay? It's not actually a separate thing. It's part of selection where, in, you make a choice. In natural selection, okay, if we go back to the four tenets of natural selection, let me explain why sexual selection is but inside, inside natural selection, we find that sexual selection is actually included in Darwin's fourth tenet. Okay, so Darwin actually, he actually, um, he actually made a provision for sexual selection before he even realized that there was sexual selection. This is how clever Darwin was. The fourth tenet says what? Go back to the fourth tenet of the natural selection lecture. It says differential survival and reproduction. Okay? You must have differences in the ability to survive to adulthood and the ability to, to make kids. That's the reproduction part, right? So it's not enough to just survive. You need to survive and you need to make kids. So sexual, natural selection, okay, is about surviving. The struggle against who? Against the environment. The selection is for the environment. That's natural selection. But what about this part here, the reproduction part? How do you make sure that you reproduce? How? It's not the same. The, the, the ways in which you can ensure that you reproduce, they are not the same as the ways you can ensure that you survive the struggle. They are different. The surviving struggle, you need natural selection. Surviving and reproducing, the reproducing part, you don't need natural selection. You need what? You need sexual selection. And that's where sexual selection comes. So actually, sexual selection is a part of natural selection. And you can bring it apart from natural selection where? At this fourth tenet here. It's this reproduction part here. Okay? So in evolution, the struggle for survival is not enough. Once you have survived, you must also struggle to reproduce. And this struggle for reproduction, that is where it, you want to make yourself attractive. Right? You want the female, you can stand out. You want to have a beautiful red color or a big strong. So the female can look at you and go, oh, that one, I want to have kids with him. Right? So you want to attract the female. But what, makes, what happens when you make yourself attractive and beautiful? The female is not the only one who's looking at you. The predator is also looking at you. So you are making yourself more attractive. But you are also making yourself more visible. And that's why you are appearing that you are not suited to your environment anymore. Because of sexual selection is making you different making you stand out and become beautiful right so let's that is what sexual selection is all about right so in the sexually reproducing organisms this adds an additional pressure on fitness right because not all the animals have the same chance of mating some are more beautiful than others and so what the beautiful ones are going to be selected first before the ugly ones right so that's where sexual selection comes into it you need to be beautiful and you need to be selected by the other sex to be a partner and make children okay you need to be attractive to the other one what makes you attractive to the other one is not the same as what makes you survive the struggle okay so you while you're becoming attractive to the other one you are losing fitness in terms of your ability to survive the struggle because maybe a predator can come and eat you while you are beautiful 
it notices you because what you are too beautiful so this is the problem natural selection is on one side making you fit for the struggle sexual selection is on the other side trying to make you fit for reproduction Mar they want to do different things natural selection makes you normal and blend into the environment sexual selection doesn't want to make you normal and blend in it wants to make you what it wants to make you attractive no? so you see how sexual natural selection and sexual selection they're always at loggerheads with each other even though both are selection right because not everyone is going to have the same chance of mating and that is what darwin called sexual selection that was darwin's second great gift to biology okay so it all revolves around what mating success you need to successfully find a mate and have kids that's what you call by mating success and how do you increase the mating success right it, it's because you want to be more attractive you try to make yourself more attractive to increase your mating success but ladies and gentlemen the hard fact of life and this is why we can't all be rock stars we can't all be tenderpreneurs we can't all be professors no because not everybody can do it and we can't also cannot all be beautiful to the other sex some of us are not going to be beautiful some of us are going to be beautiful so what does this mean when some people are I'm not, not forget about people let's talk about animals when some animals are not so beautiful like other animals in the same species who is going to be chosen to be mated if a female is choosing two males she's going to choose the beautiful one right so the the one who is not beautiful the ugly one it's not going to be chosen so the ugly one's mating success is going to be what very low nobody's choosing him but the beautiful one's mating success is going to be what very high because he's beautiful everybody all the girls want to be with him right so that introduces this concept of variance in mating success okay that's don't get confused by this what does this mean variance in mating success it only means that some are beautiful and some are not beautiful the beautiful ones will be mated the unbeautiful the ugly ones will not be mated right that's what you call variance in mating success because not everybody has the same success in mating some are successful the beautiful ones some are unsuccessful right that's what we mean by variance in mating success not everybody is going to be mating that is what it means variance in mating success right and that is precisely the foundation that sexual selection needs because immediately the sex is going to choose because there's variance in mating success and the ones that have a high success they are the ones that will pass their genes to the next generation and what increase their fitness okay you see now how sexual selection even it's making you beautiful it's increasing your fitness because why the other will notice me and i will mate and then my fitness will go up okay so that is why so se sexual selection is only dealing with the traits remember what is a trait it is a characteristic right so for example a trait in me could be i've got brown skin i have long arms that is it those are traits i've got brown eyes those are traits okay that's a trait so sexual selection is only concerned with those traits or characteristics that are making you beautiful okay that are increasing your mating success sexual selection is not interested in the traits that allow you to survive the struggle for existence no sexual selection is only trying to make you more attractive for the other sex to choose you okay so some of these beautiful traits that increase mating success in bold may not help an organism to adapt to its environment okay so there's a big conflict between natural and sexual selection okay what i explained to you earlier okay and they interact with each other but they are always at loggerheads so how do we increase mating success there are two 
ways to do it. You can um, you can fight with each other, combat, right? If you fight with each other, um, so basically you that combat is done by members of the same sex. Okay, so that means in a situation where a male chooses the sex choosing is male then two females will have to fight each other and the winner gets to go with the with the male right so this is uh, uh how combat works to increase mating success usually it's the other way around it's usually combat is done between males okay because males are the ones that like to fight more than females because they have a lot of charged up with a lot of testosterone so uh when you see combat it's usually the female who is there sitting and watching the two males fight and the winner gets to mate with that female right so that's one way of increasing your um mating success to fight with another but you fight with who you don't fight with another sex you fight with your own sex right so if it's uh if you're competing for females then the males are going to fight with each other and the best one is going to get the females right so it's intra sexual within a sex okay the other way to increase your mating success is not dealing with other males or other females it's dealing with the opposite sex so if you're a male you deal with the females if you're a female you deal with the males so you're interacting between the sexes so it will be inter so display is not with you're not displaying your beauty for the other male no you're displaying your beauty for the female so display is between two sexes okay how can i become more noticed remember this is not the same as combat combat is you fight within your sex and you are the successful one you get to mate okay display is not like that display is you beautify yourself and then you persuade the other sex so a female to find you attractive okay so this is a intersexual selection okay so you have it is what you call female choice because usually it is again the females who are choosing right so those are the two ways combat um as i said is 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 basically competing with inside one sex okay and you see examples of that thousands of examples of that in nature animals love to fight and they fight very seriously okay they fight very seriously and some animals like lions and hippos and even elephant seals the one that uh, is this one here elephant seal uh actually fight to the death imagine you fight until you die it just in order to meet why because the struggle to survive is not enough for fitness okay if you want to be involved in evolution you have to survive to adulthood and you have to reproduce if you don't reproduce your genes are not going to the next generation so for some animals like hippos and lions and so on it is so important for them to pass the genes to the next generation that if they die in trying it's okay you see they can fight to the death even that is how important it is for them to get their genes to the next generation and you see <laughs> we the human animal is actually no exception we also do the same stupid thing combat we also fight struggle and compete with other males yeah for example in this old and we do it also here in in africa uh maybe with other kinds of weapons but we do it we fight for the right to the hand of a girl right 
and in the old ways these guys used to try to shoot each other but you know there are many ways to for male humans to compete for females okay but i'm just saying that we do it as well all right so now let's look at display display is mate choice right based on your display the other sex gets to choose it's very important the difference between combat and display in second year you're already asked to tell me in the test what are the two main uh, ways to increase mating success okay it's okay to say display and combat give a few examples but in third year it's not good enough no? in third year you have to be able to unpack display and combat and have to say which one is inter and which one is intra sexual selection okay so again the peacock is a perfect example for 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 beautiful beautifying itself and then of course you have other birds birds of paradise look at the fe the male here how beautiful it is compared to the female no that's because he wants this female to find him attractive okay look at the uh, mandrel baboons how much bigger and colorful here the males always have this color here whereas the female does not so the female looks at this and more the more beautiful it is that's the one she will choose okay we see it here in africa with our um, platysaurus lizards especially here in venda on this mountain we live at uh, almost every single one of you who comes from venda especially the mountains will have seen these lizards on rocks okay and the male is is colored like this and when he displays what does he display he goes up like this yeah because he this part here is the most brightly colored and he wants the female to see that okay so lizards are doing it and <laughs> all those guys who buy ferraris with their tender money that's supposed to be going to 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 poor people yeah they buy ferraris why so that females can get into their car yeah they buy ferraris because they can make themselves more attractive now nah? and if you are a girl and you are looking at the slide and you're laughing and you're saying what a nice car then you are a victim yourself <laughs> of sexual selection let us not let us not let us not go any further with this but i just you add the human examples to show you we humans we behave exactly the same way as those animals okay because to be honest we all have a common ancestor it's not surprising that we do the very same things um so this um leads us to um another interesting uh, characteristic of animals that are involved in sexual selection when you have sexual selection you tend to get whether it's because of combat or whether it's because of display you get dimorphism right you get the male and the female they are looking start to look quite different to each other okay physically they are looking quite different to each other right and i've shown you lots of examples of that now but both combat and display so the intra and the intersexual selection strategies both of those strategies that are increasing the mating success both of them lead to sexual dimorphism okay both so it can relate to combat it can relate to display right so you can have dimorphism because of these things for example looking at combat look at all these um these uh, animals that have horns this is for using as a weapon combat to fight other of the same sex then you have the ornaments right the beautiful males the beautiful male here the beautiful male here compared to the female why do we have these ornaments we have these ornaments because these individuals the female is the one who's going to choose okay so the female does not have to be beautiful she can be normal she can be under natural selection whereas the male he is under natural selection but he's also under sexual selection because the female is not going to choose what she's not going to choose an ugly one and if she keeps choosing the most beautiful what will you have 
you will have only beautiful ones in the next generation. Okay? So we are going to, because we're in third year now, we're going to unpack this a little bit more in the next lecture. Okay? So we have another lecture um, unpacking sexual selection. And you will, we will get to that lecture next time. Stay tuned.